And the last talk for the evening is going to be struggles of uh, no, no, struggles of <laughs> 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 So my name is Adnan. I think many of you know me already through Hackware and Hackerspace meetups, right? Uh, many of you, or some of you may know me already as a PCB go-to guy for design. So, I'm in between jobs right now. I'm looking for work. <laughs> right? I completed one project, a very long project um, last month. But before the project ended, another friend comes to me, an old friend. Now, he comes to me and says, hey, he's also been uh, messing around with ESP32s and Arduinos and stuff like that. But he's a very rich friend. He's got several prawn farms in Malaysia. Right? So he comes to me, hey, help me design PCB. So he tells me what he wants. And I have to relearn all these things of IoT. Yes, I've attended many, many talks with IoT and its description and what it's all about. I must have fallen asleep or something. <laughs> so, this is me, a newbie to IoT, NB IoT. Ah, so, ah. that's what it was. So, to just to refresh myself and some of you, it's a collection of devices connected by some network, be it wired or wireless, to collect data and possibly actuate physical, like, um, give physical actions. Yeah? You want to collect data from all over the place, like lampposts to inside the homes and actuate washing machines and water pumps outside. So that's what an IoT device is about. So the possible uses of IoT ranges from consumer to commercial to industrial and to infrastructure applications. So it's pervasive everywhere. This is what IoT is meant to do. So I'll give you some examples of um, those things that I mean. By consumer, we have starting from the smallest of things that are attached to the body as wearables. Yeah, since they're connected onto the net of all sorts, it's also an IoT device. In the smart home that we talk about today, we have many things like lighting, power switches that turns on and off, and also measures power. One we've just talked from Huawei, right, just now. Kitchen appliances, the juicer machines like Juicero are all IoT connected. Yeah, that's not a very good example. <laughs> and of course, we have the very energy-consuming equipment in the home. That's the aircon. We want to we want to measure, monitor how much it takes throughout the entire day, and we want to keep costs low. So we have uh, energy management within the home. So one of the main consumers of the home is like the air conditioner. The washing machine, the ironing, the fridge, and some lesser um, powerful machines like televisions and computers, right? And um, lastly, inside the home, we also have health management or healthcare. We want to look after our elders, of which I'm going to be one soon, <laughs> right? So um, those are con considered consumer devices. Commercial devices are more like in um, bigger applications where you use it in medical and healthcare, in the hospitals, pill dispensers, pill management, medication. Um, we have building management and part of the food chain also. <coughs> right. So those are commercial applications. Moving on to industrial applications, uh, we can see that we can want to apply uh, efficiency in manufacturing. Right. So we measure or we monitor first and then we uh, analyze and measure the efficiency of how we manufacture products <coughs> in a factory. Yeah. Agriculture also has some uses of monitoring and I put there in bulk farming, which is what I'm really going to apply my, my skills to. Infrastructure projects, like some of you are from Sing Power, right? Um, you do energy monitoring and management and then finally at the country level or global level we also have environmental monitoring to see the general health of the world okay there are several kinds of iot types right we have the wired one of course most of our data we collect we want it to get into the internet into the cloud and most of them are wired, either electrically or by fiber. 
Yeah. <laughs> it knows I'm lying. <laughs> okay, so um, we've seen most of our computers are connected in the past by wire, right, through the internet and eventually converges into some server or many age. servers. Huh? You're showing your age. <laughs> Can I get a bias? What are you talking about? And then, um, <laughs> lately, <laughs> we have all these wireless technologies. Can't help yourself. Apparently. Lately. What the mesh? Mesh. So uh, the most common one would be Wi-Fi, the high-speed connections we get to our laptops and also our mobile phones. Right? Then um, you have other um, lesser-known uh, wireless technologies such as RFIDs and NFCs. They are mainly the same except that RFID is uh, unidirectional. You receive only a serial number for identification. NFC is a two-way communicator, also at very close ranges. And then we have your IEEE 802.15.4, which is an improvement over the Wi-Fi, which is 802.11. Yes. Yeah. The improvement is in the uh, modulation and the packet size and the throughput. So with lesser throughput and uh, better modulation, we get um, better power savings. And this is required for today's... Um, low power devices for data collection. So out of 802.15.4, you have a variety of sub uh, special interest uh, groups, I think they're called. Yeah, one of them is Zigbee, and then from Zigbee you have RF4CE, you have six low pen, many others, all deriving out of 802.15.4. Competing with 802.15.4, a similar but not the same technology is Bluetooth Low Energy. So Bluetooth of uh, versions 1, 2 and 3 are all for, meant for high-speed connections. Um, they started with keyboards and mouse and then headphones and music. Right? They also wanted to compete in the same space as low energy devices. So they introduced a new modulation scheme in Bluetooth 4.0 and above with something called the LE. The Light low edition, energy. low energy. Thank you. Light edition, <laughs> low energy. <laughs> 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 okay. So in the past, in some headwear meetup or what, I also attended a talk that talked about sick fox. I must have fallen asleep. I can't explain much about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not too long ago, in another headwear meetup, we had, um, I think Terence, right? Zubayad. Uh, Zubayad also talked about LoRa, LoRa when also another low energy, low data rate um, transmission technology which is useful for data collection. And finally, today I'm going to introduce, well, just talk about it because I'm a newbie, um, narrow band internet of things. So NBIoT is the latest in mobile phone technology where they already have many, many base stations so that our mobile phones can roam from one base station to another. <laughs> yeah. So, in order for our phones to work, right, um, when we are talking on the phone and many people in the same room, we are all connected to a base station or a cell station. Yeah. If we move from one location to another, that signal might get too weak and we connect to another. So that's another cell station over there which we roam from the connection over here to over there. So in order to fill the full space of your premises, or however big it might be, countrywide premise, right? There are many cell stations all around the country. Now these cell stations already have the technologies of um, frequency hopping and modulation technique. These things can be tweaked on the fly or through firmware updates, much like the particle uh, platform you saw earlier, with very little intervention from the cell phone operator. Right? So, the cell phones use a lot of bandwidth. We're not only transmitting voice now, we're also transmitting lots of internet data. 
So in the frequency spectrum, right, that is reserved just for the cell phone, the service providers and the people who define the standards of mobile phones have discovered that they have narrow bands on each edge of their frequency spectrum. All right, and they make use of these modulation techniques just to use those narrow bands on the edge of the bandwidth that is given for the mobile phone. So for every mobile phone, there is, a, or for every country, the country licenses to the service providers bandwidth in the frequent spectrum to the service providers. And the service providers now just uses the edge of each spectrum. So that is where they get the word narrow band. They just use a tiny little band on the edge of the entire bandwidth for low data rate transmission. All right, I'll explain further this in another time if I can get up my hands on more uh, technical data. Yeah. So one of my struggles in that trying in trying to read this up, I stumbled on a website called 3 g Org. and I listed out the documents right in the web page the web page is non-ending it's like Facebook as soon as you reach the <laughs> it scrolls up again so there's just too many documents to read right I went okay I give up I'm just gonna get the project done so for my case right my friend comes to me he says he wants to do farm monitoring in my remote location yeah so the power and internet they are not readily available there are several readings per day. So each day there's actually one man going up to the into the middle of the water and taking some readings. What readings I do not know. It doesn't tell me. Yeah? All I know is an electronic device that can be connected to our computers. And also many locations, not only in terms of farms, but within each pond. Yeah, so there is a need for automating such things. The pond is only waist deep. There's no need to take a sampan. We can actually ask the people to go there and take a reading, right? But it's troublesome. Mm -hmm. So this is a perfect opportunity to automate this uh, reading. So what are the considerations right, for designing this project? It has to have long-term operation. We don't want something that we have to replace the batteries every week. Yeah, so it's he wants three months. I'm a bit more conservative, I promise one month. So it's somewhere not between one to three months now. All right? It must have robust outdoor survival. So um, we describe boxes, right? Now, in the past, I used to design PCBs as small as I can. I suggested this much. <laughs> so he came back and said, no, something bigger, right? So eventually, we decided that it should fit. <laughs> <laughs> so these boxes are made from um, polycarbonate. polycarbonate. This comes from a popular website company called polycase.com. Yeah, um, they're relatively low cost. I think it's $9, but shipping is 60 <laughs> Okay, so uh, the size we, we kind of pinned it down. So although we don't have Wi-Fi out there, right? They um they don't route uh, fiber or ADSL down there, but there is still a need for configuration in our development. So we still need Wi-Fi within this um, design. Um, we have to be careful of how much data we. Um, we are trying to read, so we have to be aware of the low data rate limitation. Thankfully, NBIOT, its um, maximum data rate is 250 kilobits per second. So uh, that's not too bad. We just can't do webcams or videos. And the types of peripherals are not made known to me. Yeah, Only that he needs like um, four digital inputs, um, RS-485, strangely enough. A, a 4-20 milliampere loop circuit. Yeah, this is um common to people in the manufacturing industry where they measure oil and gas. Yeah, 
and um, um, and a couple of analog inputs. So the requirements aren't hard. Any microcontroller today can do the job. Yes. Uh, is it always dependent upon the cellular coverage of the equipment? There is cellular coverage. Yeah. No, <laughs> cell phone coverage they have. Yeah. You have the coverage. Yeah. So it's, these are the considerations, right? <laughs> so we are <argue>, using. <laughs> he wants to use Arduino and shields, right? So the shield he gave me, he really gave it to me, right? Yeah, now nah, use this. Yeah, I said no. I like to design PCBs. Right? Anyway, it's a pretty good module. Um, it's a SIM 7000C. I think it's um, a Chinese um, uh, radio module maker. Um, he gave me a SIM card. And then, um, so I, I had some, uh, well, not argue, argument, more like discussion. And he, finally, <laughs> <laughs> he finally agreed and he actually gave this to me too, right? So he says, use the SIM card from here to here. Okay, so we got that pin down. We're going to use the DGXB. Now, this is costly. Um, it's no way in price comparison against the particle. Particle, I, I thought I saw the price of 15 bucks. This is nearly 100. Yeah, so it's pretty costly. And then, so, show yeah. here as well. Oh, show there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Come on now. Ah, this is a pretty cheap um, development board. Yeah, it's got the XB um, header on it too, so it's useful for me to um, actually um, try programming this thing. So I we're not relying on the Arduino. We finally discuss and agree to use the ESP32. Yeah, so the SIM 7000 is now the XB LTEM or NBIOT. So the type of interfaces, like I earlier mentioned, you want to support in input, RS-485, some digital inputs, some digital outputs, and some and one relay context. Actually, um, is there a, um, a, a controller you can program inside the XB? I think there is. Yes, there is. Um, the DGXB actually runs um, MicroPython. So it's a fully scriptable um, computer just by itself, and it can do many things already. What it doesn't have is that it doesn't have Wi-Fi nor enough inputs to handle this much of um, peripherals. I could probably do an I/O expander, but it's much too too much trouble. Uh, I'd rather use this in um, a pass um, pass through mode as a slave. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so he wants rechargeable batteries, which means I have to design the charger circuit for it too. Yeah. Um, again, we are um, discussing whether the power inside four lithium ion the circular cylindrical cells, 186500, the four of them can last for three months. That's still arguable. We are going to manage that. And also a real time plug. Wow. So, um, interrupts, um, alarm, alarm interrupts. Yes. So that's the reason why I have to have a charger within the um, within this PCB design. Can you pull the like? Can you pull the top signal Sorry. Uh, yes, sorry, hang on. But why do you need to run it for three months and go solar? Change the battery. Um, change the battery. Mm -hmm. No, if it's solar panel, we don't have to worry about um, yeah. battery yeah. life anymore. The solar panel recharges the battery. So within the within the enclosure, we need to fit the four lithium ion batteries and have a charge controller to control the lithium ion charge. Why do you need four lithium batteries? Backup, in case we don't get um, nighttime lights and stuff like that. <laughs> well, anyway, 
uh, it's a good point. Um, I can bring that up in my future discussion. Yeah. Yeah. That, that seems like that's a good thing. Yeah, I know. Maybe we can use a smaller panel. <laughs> <laughs> a cute one. Uh, well, it's not that's the storage that the, the batteries are sized for the dark room. Yes. The panel is sized for the. Well, okay. it doesn't have to be a big panel, no. Enough to uh, enough to run and keep it overnight. Yeah. 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 Well. Anyway, um, if we do that, we get some versatility. Yeah. So, um, so these are his choices, right? We can check it from us. Let me know. Do yourself. Ah, there you go. All right. Here comes the fun stuff, right? So, testing this is pretty straightforward. I've got the Leonardo with an XB header. Yes, slap the XB on top of it, write some very easy code to do pass through. USB as a serial port passes through to the serial port on the XB. So, with the Leonardo, it solved a lot of um, wire, hacky wire. DG, who makes the XB, also gets a test software, right? That re relies only on the serial port, nothing else needed. So I ran the software. This is a successful uh, display already. So you've got a signal strength, two buck, two five buck. Yeah. And um, it's got some connection. Okay. I should have shown you the next slide first. This was my first problem. When I got the DGXB, right? It did not have the right firmware to change its frequency bands. It was formerly on a firmware called 1140B. And without knowledge of changing that frequency band or even knowing that it could be changed, I struggled for a few nights with the M1 SIM card. So M1, I'm sorry, Singtel SIM card. So in Singapore, Singtel only relies on one band called band 8, which is 915 megahertz. This is for NBIOT's um, usage. So, while the newly received um, XB came with the firmware 1140B, I could not change the uh, frequency usage of the module to our Singapore's 915 megahertz. It was stuck on some AT&T or Verizon frequency. And I hadn't known that until I scouted the night and stumbled upon release notes of the 1140C, which actually says they now support frequency band modifications. It's necessary if you don't just have the same No, you have to instruct the SIM to strictly um, use that band. Yeah, certainly, and of course in the US, um, they have very tight regulations on these things. Yeah. So, they have to have a different firmware for the US versus the rest of the world. I guess. I guess that's a reason. So, I finally learned of it, and I finally found the firmware to update. Okay, updating in the XB manuals, they say to update, you need a third pin connected to the XB. <coughs> oh, where is it? Yeah, so on the Leonardo board, only two pins are connected to the XB. The trans um, the UART receive and transmit. A third pin called the ETR go to sleep pin is required. And that's with this setup, it failed to update the firmware. <laughs> Alright, so in, that, in, in, in the end, what I had to do was solder wires from this to a FPDI to UART converter just to do the update, rip it all off again, and then started using the new Leonardo. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> also, sorry about the flow control. So, when you also, is it recommended to use a hardware flow control? Okay. The DTR signal is required for firmware reflashing. That's, um, that's what it says in the data sheet, but not required for normal operations. Yes. 
Yeah. <laughs> so finally, when I change the frequency usage to the, our 950 megahertz, I finally got some bars. So that was my first struggle. Got through that. So for a long time, after even getting five bars, no signal, no TCP IP, no IP address, nothing. I press after some testing, I managed to flash update, I still get no signal strength equation, blah, 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 blah. Now there's this setting called the APN. I don't know what it means. But um, so I asked my friends at Hackerspace, hey guys, you know the um, APN for Singtel? Um, <laughs> try EIDS, EIDS. Yes. Um, is that for WAP? Well, they all look at me, what? Oh man, you're so old fashioned. Nobody uses web these days, <laughs> right? So, anyway, I tried e ideas. Didn't work, right? <coughs> Talk to my friend, he says, try internet. Oh, yeah, so easy, let's try internet. Didn't work also. <laughs> Later in the evening, he finally says, try STM IoT. What? <laughs> yeah, <more. laughs> Okay, so with STM IoT, <laughs> I, I finally get five bar and an IP address. I don't think I, I captured it somewhere here, but I finally managed to log on to an example server and um, have a TCP session. So here's Eliza, one of the example servers, giving me a feedback. Why don't you need a therapist? I feel fine. Do you offer to feel fine all the time? <laughs> I see. It's like us Google. <laughs> <laughs> So, hooray, that works, right? That's great. I think this was October 29. Uh, this must be October 29. Struggle number two. <laughs> oh, network replacement failed. So, with a, with a reply code of 25 here, it means cellular network registration denied. So, there's full signal strength. Singtel recognizes it but denies you any services. <laughs> SIM card expiry. <laughs> so up to today, I'm still stuck. This was a few days ago only. I'm still stuck. I'm waiting for new cards. Um, so my friend is he's going to do all the purchases. So I asked him um, how much it costs, right? He says it's only about two bucks a month per card. So that's not a, that's not a bad deal. Wait, so they're like special cards? Just yes, for NBIOG. Wow. You have to speak to their sales and request for it. I'm not sure about that. When I receive the package, I'll let you know. So that's part two, huh? Yeah. five cards. Five cards. Five cards. That's from Singtel. Yes, from Singtel. M1 also sells it, but we've never contacted them yet. So there are two service providers in Singapore. Yeah, that's All right. So next hack where I'll update you on that. Yay. Part two of this. Yay. All right, so that's my struggle number two. Do I still any more time? No yeah. more time. No. Anyway, <laughs> we have a PCT in progress. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a demonstration. <laughs> he he has a deadline. At, at the end of this month, there's an exhibition called OSA, something to do with oil and gas industry. So he wants to demonstrate it. So we are in a rush to complete something, stuff it into the box. But it does not fit this box. Because there's no time for me to do my um, downsizing, I use the big box. Yeah, <laughs> so I cheated a bit. So um, this is in progress. Um, I hope to finish it by the end of the week. Next week I'll have a thing, and then I have this stuff. Our next hardware I can show you. Hopefully, 
a demonstrable um, uh, yeah. NBIOT device. Uh, All right. So next week we have updates in the next week. All right. Thank you.